We're good, Mike. We're on? You're on. Well, here we are. I'm sorry I am 10 minutes late on cooking at the Rum Runner with Mike Dolan. Um, I apologize. We're, we're trying to open for, uh, or we did accomplish, opening for um, takeout and, and curbside. Uh, we opened up uh, seven restaurants uh, in the McLoons group uh, this week. Uh, Boathouse up in West Orange, uh, Asbury Park, Long Branch, Titten Falls, Red Bank. I'm sure I'm missing one, and of course here in Seabright. So uh, we've been a little busy here, and we look forward to cooking for you again. Today we're going to do uh, blackened salmon with a simple pan sauce, garlic asparagus, and herbed couscous. Uh, we are selling chef's boxes where you can purchase all these ingredients. Uh, this dish was $40 that fed two. So my, uh, me and my team will prepare the box. You call for it, you pick it up, you take it home. You can cook along with me. You can watch the video and cook it later. Whatever works for you. Um, we're going to do salmon today, blackened salmon to be example, to be exact. Excuse me. Um, I got into some Cajun cooking a few years ago, and I had fun with it. Um, I, I can't uh, stop reading about it whenever I can. I'll put my nose in a book of Louisiana and of course uh, Mississippi, uh, the entire. Cajun area. Uh, there's a difference between Cajun and Creole. We're not going to go too far down the road uh, with that lesson though. So we have our mise en place in French and in the world of restaurants and kitchens. That means having everything at our fingertips. Uh, uh, our chef's box included today two seven ounce pieces of salmon, some Cajun spice, a shallot, some fresh thyme, some butter, a bunch of asparagus, some fresh garlic, some Moroccan couscous, scallions, parsley, a red pepper, a plum tomato, a lime, heavy cream, and white wine. Francisco, could you give me uh, not a table? I got it. A little improv here. So I apologize. This whole episode is going to be sort of off the cuff, a little improv. Uh, we've been prepping all day and trying to get our restaurants ready, so uh, it's not as if I mastered, you know, the old format, so now we're jumping into a new, and this is going to be, like I said, a little uh, improvisation. So, needless to say, we're going to start with our salmon. We have some beautiful Atlantic salmon here. When purchasing salmon, you can buy either farmed or farmed or, or wild. Some people like to say, oh, farm's horrible. That's not necessarily true. There are a lot of good farms. Uh, we deal with Trinity Seafood in Lakewood, who provide us with a fantastic farm, farm-raised salmon that comes out of Canada. It's truly a spectacular product. We use it in all of our restaurants. That's not to say we don't use wild. With wild salmon, you're uh, beholden to the you know, to temperature, uh, the water's in Alaska, so sometimes it's not available. The water has to be just right. You only get, you know, from, let's say, spring through late summer, early fall, and then that product shuts down. So we like to use a farm-raised salmon. But needless to say, we do special wild king salmon here and there, coho, sockeye, you name it. So. We're going to start with our salmon. We're going to dust this with Cajun spice. So we're going to liberally season this with Cajun spice. And all Cajun spice is, is paprika, some garlic powder, some onion powder, uh, and a plethora of other uh, peppers, uh, black pepper, cayenne, white pepper, some dried thyme, dried oregano, dried basil. We're gonna hit it with just a little bit of salt. A lot of Cajun spices have a good chunk of salt in them. Uh, some don't. So you can also make your own. Go on Google, check it out. How do I make my own uh, blackening spice? And then it'll become pretty easy to you. So we have our salmon. 
We have a hot pan right here. We have a nice high flame. My dad just asked me the other day, how do you cook uh, with those really, really hot flames? And in a restaurant, you're sort of, you know, you're, you're pressed a little and you have to cook a little faster than you like. At home, you can reduce this flame to medium high. That's fine. That's a really good temperature to cook, but you want to cook in a hot pan. You never want to do anything in a cold pan. You'll risk sticking. Uh, your protein can absorb fat, and that's not what you want. So we're going to put a little vegetable oil into our pan. Typically, I use a blackening, uh, a cast iron pan. I forgot mine at home. Uh, my mother just. Uh, my mother just informed me that the cast iron pan that she gave me is over a hundred years old. Her parent, I think, I don't know if one of my grand, grandmothers inherited it from, from a relative and uh, we just found out that it was a hundred years old. I still use it um, on a weekly basis at home. So we have some nice hot oil and when we're cooking, with hot oil, we push our oil all the way to the back of the pan, and we put our fish in, or whatever protein we're using. And then we bring it back. And that's gonna assure hot oil not, not um, splashing up on us and burning us, and, and it, it could be a make for an ugly scene. When you're a young cook, when you're first starting off in a restaurant, You'll be covered, you're covered with burns and cuts, and it's really, really horrific, and you work really dirty, too. I used to bring my chef jackets home, and my mother was nice enough to uh, wash them, and uh, it, it actually looked like I rolled around in mud for about uh, an eight-hour shift. But uh, she always got my chef clothes white, and I was just telling her how thankful I was for when I was a young cook, how she did that for me. It's my mom's birthday tomorrow, so before I proceed, I just want to wish you, a, Mom, a happy birthday. I love you very much, as always. Uh, Mother's Day was the other day. I'm very, very grateful and thankful to have you in my life. So thanks, Mom. There's a question about the oil. Can olive oil be used? Sure, absolutely. Olive oil is a little healthier. Uh, the smoking point's a little uh, different. So olive oil tends to want to break down a little quicker. And when an oil breaks down, uh, you'll get some smells off of it and, and, and uh, it, it, it's called burning and it's not that pleasant. So you do want to use a, um, you know, olive oil is fine. You're just going to want to pay attention to it. So, all right. So we have our salmon in. We're going to put this in the oven in a minute. We're going to get our couscous going. We have a pan here. In our couscous, we're going to add a little shallot. Shallots in the lily family, or the onion family. And we're just going to mince some up. Just to give our, our couscous some flavor, we're going to take a couple cloves of garlic. We're going to do the same. We're gonna smash them and mince. So our salmon's looking pretty good. We're gonna take this just as is and we're going to put it right in the oven. We're going to cook our salad to about 145 degrees. This is going into a 350 degree oven right now. Um, so it's going to take, I don't know, about six minutes. And we're going to bring that up into an internal temperature of 145. If you like your sound a little less, by all means, 
um, just cook it a little less hot. Okay? You're the decision maker on how you like to eat your, you know, your fish. Uh, salmon is, is cooked medium rare. Often people prefer that, and uh, to each his own, of course. So we're gonna get our couscous going. With couscous, this is semolina, semolina flour. It's Moroccan. You'll find it a lot in, uh, and actually, in where my family's from is from Sicily. You'll find an African influence on Sicilian cooking. So I've always liked to use couscous. Um, all this is a semolina and water. So it wouldn't be very gluten free or, or tolerant or anything like that. Um, you can simply omit the couscous if that's what you, if you are gluten free. So this is gonna go into a pan. We're gonna throw our garlic and shallots in here. We're going to put a little salt. About an ounce of butter. And we're gonna add some stock or water. I'm using chicken stock right now. And we're going to imagine you're going to use two parts stock or water to one part couscous. We're going to bring it back to a boil. And this, this is going to be as easy as done. In the interim, we're going to get some asparagus going. We have a pan. Uh, we have some beautiful asparagus here. All this stuff was included in our chef's box today. Asparagus are one of the first things that come out in the spring, along with really nice stuff like leeks and ramps and scallions. Uh, we're going to use some asparagus. We've already cleaned the asparagus just with a vegetable peeler. You'll see some people just chop right about there. You're wasting a lot of your money. Here at McClue's, we never waste money. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've always wanted to get as much as I can out of, uh, out of what we're paying for. So here's our asparagus, just cleaned with a vegetable peeler. And you can actually feel, when working with an asparagus, where it's tender. It'll have a natural break to it. In this case, we're going to cut these in half, just like so, nice and easy. Uh, we are going to add a little butter. A little less than an ounce. Chefs use a lot of butter when they cook. Of course they do. It makes things taste very, very good. But olive oil is fine too, and it's trouble lipid. So we're going to get our asparagus right in there. We're going to take a couple of cloves of garlic. We're going to smash. We're going to smash. We're going to be very careful when we cut. We're going to throw these right in. We're going to season this with a little salt. Okay. So now as you see, our couscous is coming to a boil. That's great. So this is a set it and forget it type thing. Our couscous is up to a boil. All we have to do is cover it. A pan, a lid, or anything like that. Just cover it. You're going to kill the flame. And let's just push this to the back. And by the time we're ready, the couscous is going to be cooked. Two questions. Yes. Somebody named Kelly O'Brien, you may know, has a hard time finding shallots. Can she use it's this? It's not anything? hard. It's my sister. Kelly, shallots are right next to the garlic. They are right next to the garlic. You, I know you, you can see that shallots are right there. So I kid. All That's right. my lovely sister. Um, I will pick you up shallots. No worries. But, but it's a great question, sister. Um, if you don't have a shallot, you can use a red onion. If you don't have a red onion, use a white onion, a scallion, or a leek. It's certainly a preference, or you can just go to garlic. They're all in the same family. They just have unique little taste to it. And, and of course, I just would do this. And a quick question, is it 
The asparagus, the more taste there is to it. What was the question? The thinner the asparagus, the better it tastes, or? I think that's a preference. Okay. I think that's a preference. My boss, Lori Kotu, loathes when I use jumbo asparagus. She was just telling me how she thinks of, of, uh, of, of how unpleasant some of my plates have been uh, with jumbo asparagus. And I, of course, I kid here too. Um, some people don't like the, uh, asparagus does tend to get crazy big now. Um, I've never seen uh, that, that thin asparagus are tastier, but that is certainly a preference. Try it out, see what you like, and go from there. So we have our, we have our, our asparagus just cooking in a little butter. We're gonna lower this flame, and we're gonna cover this. And we're gonna cover this, and just leave it on a low flame, until they're ready. Um, three, four minutes. You don't want to overcook in any which way. And we're going to store our pan sauce for our seven. So our pan sauce. Should I let you know you hit the six minute mark on your seven? Oh, sure. for a little bit. Just cover just for a few minutes so it stays warm. And we're going to start our pan sauce. Our pan sauce is going to be um, some scallions, some tomato, uh, red pepper, um, some cream and some wine. Yes, I'm reading a recipe as we go. I'm, I'm just not that good at this yet. So, uh, but we're working on it constantly. So, we have some red pepper. And we're just going to give this a small dice. start pulling all the liquid out and sort of making a sauce.
So here we go. We have a little white wine. On wine, whatever you're drinking is great. We get a lot of questions in the, in the restaurant um, asking to omit wine when we cook. It's never a problem. Uh, typically, a chef will answer, well, the wine cooks out. Uh, but by all means, that's a preference of your own. And if you don't want wine, all you have to do is ask for, you know, can you do that? There's some sensitivities out there. I get that. So um, if you'd like to omit the wine, just use chicken stock. Connor, can you put two plates up here for me? Two round uh, rum runner plates? Thank you. So here we go. We're going to cook this down by about half. This is just going to take a couple of minutes. We're going to get the rest of our couscous going now. We have some Italian parsley that we already washed off. We have some fresh thyme. Whenever you clean thyme, thyme's one herb that I don't suggest um, buying dry. I don't like it. Buy fresh. One of the first chefs I worked for, Mark Michael Ajak, um, at Whispers, used fresh thyme on so many dishes, and I always loved it. It's got such a really nice fragrance to it. It's great with vegetables, fish. Um, really, really good. And all you have to do is take the sprig and just pull down on it. Um, as we continue, we have a little heavy cream here. We're going to add it right to our pan sauce. We're going to cook that down. And by cooking it down, all that means is we're going to reduce. That's a fancy word you'll always hear in a kitchen, I'll reduce by half, reduce by half. Whenever you reduce something, you're reducing, um, you're reducing the quantity and basically increasing uh, the, the intensity of the flavors. So we're gonna cook this down just for a minute or two. As we move forward, we're gonna check our couscous. There's our beautiful couscous. See, it was nice and easy. We're going to add our herbs to it. And that's going to wake that taste all the way up. Sicilians make a beautiful dish. Fish couscous is one of my favorite dishes in the world. Again, it's that Northern African uh, influence on Italian cooking. Here, I just find it to be a quick, easy starch. and. Uh, so that's why essentially we're using it. So our sauce is coming down really nice. At this point in time, we're gonna use a little zest of lime. If you're using limes, always look for that sticker. Same thing on red peppers. They always have stickers on. So we're just gonna zest a little of the skin in there, and that will, that will give you a really nice flavor. We're gonna add a little lime juice. We're going to take it off the heat. And you don't want any seeds or pits in here. So if you want to juice first, by all means do so. If you have a lemon, use a lemon, that's fine. You just want a little acidity in there. A little acidity to fight against all that fat. Um, we're going to add a little, we have a little bit of parsley left that we just want a little color. A little green color in there. We're going to use a little butter. It's about half an ounce. And this is a restaurant trick. All you're doing, you add butter at the very, very end. The process in French is called monte bad. To mount with butter, it's just going to round out your sauce and really give it a nice richness. And all you have to do is you can either whisk or, or just shake your pan. And if your sauce is too thick, you can always just go back to your stock and add a little stock. 
or water. I wouldn't use wine at this stage. McClune was on Fox Business today. I already did a great job announcing that we're that all of our locations are opening up. We're all excited about that. So our couscous hits the plate. preference as far as how you'd like to serve it. If you want to serve it family style, that's a great idea. We got a beautiful blackened salmon. that right off the fish. And there you have our blackened salmon, herb couscous, garlic asparagus, and simple pan sauce. Even through a mask, it smells delicious. <laughs> I actually really like the smell of this, too. It, it keeps hitting me in the face, so I'm really, really enjoying this, and this might make our menu really, really soon. We just so. have one quick question uh, about substituting the cream. Can you use something else? Like someone suggested her name, I think, is Stephanie. Can you use almond milk? Uh, I would love to say that I'm all-knowing, and I know that. I don't know that. I do know um, that last week or on mother's day my golden retriever and i prepared dinner for my wife and uh we made a sauce out of uh, ac uh out of acorn squash we cooked it had a little chicken and ve or vegetable stock to it and we pureed it and that was our sauce you could always uh roast the pepper puree it mix it with a little stock hit it with a little acidity and you'd be getting somewhat of the same flavors in there and the same would hold true for a tomato you know, but yeah, you could do this without a without a heavy cream. If you have any questions, email me, mdolan at mcclunes.com. I really don't mind answering questions at any time. Well, you live with the person that asked that question, so you're Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right. here's our salmon dish. Uh, it was great seeing everyone this week. Next week, we're going to be doing uh, McClune's crab cakes. We're going to be doing that with an array of grilled vegetables, a cool slaw of some sort and a little spicy mayonnaise. So that's gonna be our dish next week. Uh, we hope to see you in the restaurants. Please come and see us at at, um, uh, at uh, Robinson Ale House and Pier House in Long Branch. The Rum Runner, I'll be cooking here. I look forward to seeing you. We're, we're in Asbury Park, we're in West Orange. We're doing some great things up there with our, with our chef Stephen Koch. So we have a ton, a ton of Really, really talented chefs at McLuhan. Some really great people that are just getting back to work, and we're really excited about cooking for you. Thanks, Mike.